Hello everyone, this is Peter. And this is Aliu. And you're listening to Pineapple Chunks. And today we're going to be talking about Infarm raising $170 million in equity and debt on their new Series C round. And it's vertical farming. We'll get right into it. We'll explain what it is. And we're also going to be talking about the billionaire who wanted to die broke. And he ended up dying broke out of a responsible charity. Yeah, it wasn't bad karma or anything. Additionally, we're going to talk about Ray Dalio and his company, Bridgewater Associates, how it's down 18.6% year to day. Damn. What about the economic machine? <laughs> what about? The, and for those of you who don't know, we'll get right into it. So Infarm raises $170 million in equity and debt um, in their new Series C investment round. And in farm harvest plants um, and vegetables and things of that nature for produce, and they've harvested more than five hundred thousand plants monthly. That's and a lot of leaves. That's a lot. That's a, that's very productive. You can make a blanket every a month. Five hundred thousand a month. Leaves. Every two months is a million, and with operations across ten countries and thirty cities worldwide. That's right. They started off in Berlin and have expanded globally very successfully. In the U.S., they've mainly entered through Ko- Kroger grocery stores, which are very popular grocery stores in more Middle America, North America, not so much the South. And the reason, uh, the way they've implemented them is by creating little kind of towers inside the grocery stores for customers to be able to pluck them or get them right from the shelf, fresh and organic. And this makes them almost infinitely scalable in a sense, because you can simply add more modules to whatever space that, um, you know, if space permits. And so like these vertical farms are very efficient. They use um, very little energy. They're powered by internet of things, database driven um, technology. Mm -hmm. And um, they're calling it farming as a service almost. Um, And the, the investment round is led by LGT Lightstone, an impact investing initiative fund. Um, which is uh, pretty interesting. They're leading the Series C round. Yeah, what makes them so appealing is because they are kind of starting this whole agricultural revolution where farming is a service in regards to IoT or Internet of Things technology, right? So this process will be able to create a lot of sustainability, making 99 point nine percent less space take up as opposed to conventional farming nowadays and using about 95 percent less water through hydroponic or aeroponic methods and and it says 90 percent of electricity used throughout the in-farm network is from renewable energy right yeah so they plan to reach zero emissions by 2021 they're really on that green tip absolutely and the founder um, is Osnat Mikaeli mm-hmm. and brothers, Erez and Guy Golanska. And um, it's called, it's basically indoor vertical farming. Mm-hmm. And they're capable of growing herbs, lettuce, and other vegetables. It's pretty cool. It's almost, because if you think about it, about the amount of land right now being used for agriculture is about the size of South America. And that's not even considering the amount of land being used by livestock which is about the size of africa and then you take into account overpopulation by 2050 and then the amount of uninhabitable land on the earth it's almost like this process of farming is the new future of agriculture so really excited to see where we are 10 years 20 years down the line with this uh, sort of technology and internet of things helping farming and the whole industry as a whole Right. So by 2024, it's projected to be a three billion uh, dollar industry in the sector. And yeah. Yeah. Their aim is their aim is to disrupt the supply chain as a whole, which they consider inefficient and produces a lot of waste. A lot of waste. Indeed, it does produce the food industry is wasteful. Yeah. Um, I'm going to pull up a video really quick of the. Well, I'll put it in here and. We'll, we'll comment on it in a bit when, we, when I connect. But LGT Lightstone Group is um, 
they're leading the round for Series C, and we're talking about like Series C funding. And if those of you don't know, like, see, there's a there are different stages to a, a private company, um, because they're both private and public companies, right? Um, the public companies you can invest in on the stock market, um, just like Apple, Netflix. But then the private companies are the ones that you can't necessarily directly invest in, or the public can't necessarily directly invest in, like Airbnb or a company like Infarm. You know, I mean, with these kinds of uh, production numbers with their data-driven technology, a uh, wise investor would think, and then with the smart money behind it, you know, why wouldn't you want to invest in a company like this? Mm-hmm. I mean, I would put I would put some money in here. Like I that would be fantastic. Put some money in that. If I could, I mean, they're using Internet of Things, which is basically uh, computers that are placed inside of um, hardware, Every, everyday items, everyday items, basically, yeah. and they measure when they need maintenance. They let you know when they when they need to be fixed. It's just much more efficient, and it's things really don't cool. break down as much. It's efficient in the sense that it uses cloud uh, management tools too, so electricity right. costs are low, um, and they can basically control all the all the vertical farms from one facility because it's all cloud based. So it's so it's super efficient, um, less labor across the board, less energy, less space, less water, mm-hmm. and oh, it's not. This is not. So basically, the Series C round is a very very big round, and and this comp this uh this venture capital fund that's leading it, um, it's a private banking and asset management group owned by an entrepreneurial family, the Princely House of Liechtenstein, Liechtenstein. And um, other com- uh, venture capital funds that have invested in this is uh, Atomico. And uh, Atomico, interestingly enough, is a European impact venture capital fund <clears throat> that invested in a company that LU uh, wanted to copy one time, uh, yeah. their business model. And uh, it's called, the, the, co- the company is Fat Llama. Yeah, so what Fat Llama does is basically provide a platform for uh, you or me to go on and put items for rent. So anything that I have in my home that I think somebody can find valuable to use for a week or a month, I can put that on item on for rent and they can pay me a fee depending on how many days they want it for and I would lend them that item. So I thought it was a pretty good idea, right? Because we're entering a very shared economy type of space and lending everyday things would be a nice uh, side hustle yeah it's like anybody the, to be able to do it's like the uber or the or the airbnb of like of everyday items. Of everything right yeah they i know atomico says that they invested in them because for of the reason. similar Fat yeah Lama for good reasons doing really well similar reasons i mean it's um they said the company's product and they they're basically they invested in the series a round so they invest in anywhere between two million and 15 million dollars that's Typically, traditionally known like as a Series A round, mm-hmm. um, those are the prices that people invest in. That's what they call it, the Series A. Anything above fifteen million would be the the, the Series B round, and I believe um, the cap right there, um, thirty to sixty million is the Series B round, and then the Series C round is a uh, is a much larger one. The whole it's, alphabet uh, definitely just gets much bigger more and bigger than sixty million dollars. So that's huge. So it could be upwards of one hundred eighteen million. So that's why. Um, Infarm was around 170 million, so that's considered a Series C round. And then um, there's also pre-series funding, like there's before Series A, there's seed funding, and then angel funding, and those are more like successful entrepreneurs or friends and family um, that have given you uh, their money to to inv- to invest in you. All the money, give and me all your money. So that's a so that's so if you didn't know that, now you do, and that's how the the venture capital funding cycle for companies works, and. In this case, um, Fat Llamas, they invested Series A round. And th- what they're going to do, what kind of value they're going to do, similar to what um, LGT might do for Infarm, is uh, scale up the company's product engineering and operations team in, in London and hire city general managers across the U.S. to further grow their user base there. And, you know, it's not necessarily cut and paste about, but it's like the kind of value that these investors bring to the table because it's a private investment is not necessarily like a pub- like a Private investor is not like a public investor. A, um, public investor just invests and just kind of and, and right. To be a private kind investor, of you kind of have a have to have a lot of credibility and a lot of uh, net worth. No. Also, yeah, knowledge because you have knowledge. to. You usually, I mean, typically, limited partners um, in a in a in a venture capital fund, which are considered the investors, like they assist in making connections for the company, 
um, you know, how we how it said here, an engineer improving the engineering and operations team. It can be through management or technical, or it can be a, a, a variety of things, but they bring value either monetary or um, through connection. That's it's the difference. Also, it's also exclusive at the end of the day. Right? It's almost like private yeah. school. Like you either know somebody or you have the money to put your child in uh, a private school as opposed to public school where anybody is fair game to enroll. And um, it, exactly. I mean, it's 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 quite a, um opaque industry, one that there's a high barrier of entry, um, but where the but the returns are astronomical. Yeah. So that's what's what's very appetizing about it. And we're here to share it with you more information on it. So if you enjoy this, we'll, we'll be more than happy to talk more about it. Mm -hmm. And the, so the total funding to date for Infarm has been three hundred million dollars, which is um, which is fantastic. Three hundred million. For it was yeah. a billion. No a million. Oh. Three, a total. Oh, it is three million. Three million. Yeah. Oh, and, wow. Um, so that's pretty pretty damn good. It's a good amount. Um, good for them. And when they go yeah. public, we'll we'll be on there. I'd love to see like a whole building in the middle of New York City just dedicated to uh, vertical farming. That'd be pretty impressive. They might go. F they might go public. I mean, maybe they they won't go public. But if they do go public, it'll probably be after their Series D round yeah. or whatever one they decide. Because you can go all the way to F. G E, they can go to Z. I think I, I've never seen all the Z, way actually. to Z. What, do, what you happens go, after usually, Z? You just usually, usually, just. I mean, it gets the numbers get too big. Actually, it doesn't. Um, oh, there's like a limit actually, because then you just Alpha, go IPO. Gamma. It's usually A B C, yeah. And then, uh, and then Round you usually go public. Alpha. Wow. Okay. Well, let's get into our next story. Yeah, let's talk yeah. about the billionaire who is gonna die, not a billionaire. <laughs> <laughs> so charles chuck feeney 89 he co-founded airport retailer duty-free shoppers with um, robert miller in 1960 and he amassed billions of dollars while living a life of uh frugality and and you know he, he was a philanthropist and he pioneered the idea of giving while living spending most of your fortune on big hands-on charity bets instead of giving um, um instead of funding a foundation upon death hmm. so he he basically he he basically invested all the money that he made he he basically put into uh, philanthropic efforts and um 8 billion dollars of philanthropic giving is a it's a good amount of money it's no small feat what a yeah. great guy honestly it's no small feat. Eight billion dollars. What what uh what were his favorite sectors like in terms of well not sec I don't know if sectors is the right word, but charities. Right. What what do you think he or does it say what he fancied the most? I mean with eight billion dollars it's that's You can be pretty diverse. Quite, di billion quite dollars, diverse. Yeah. Um let's see. Quite frankly, I I'm I'm not necessarily sure. The story was just so fascinating to me. The the idea of a billionaire Working and becoming a, a man who is um, considered respectable with many resources and then ultimately making a vow to give it to to those underserved. Um, yeah, it makes you think uh, if all these other billionaires would do the same thing, what ha things would happen. Because right? I don't know the impact of what his donations did, but I'm sure they were pretty not granular they were pretty right eight billion dollars a lot you can do a lot with yeah that. it says that it says that here it's a, he set aside about two million dollars for his wife and his wife's retirement mm. and um so in, in other words he's given away three hundred and seventy five thousand percent more money than his current net worth um wow eight billion dollars to universities foundations nonprofits, all these things and um Wow, what a guy. Cool guy. I'd like to have a coffee with that guy for sure. Chuck Feeney. So anyway, moving on to the next story, <laughs> Ray Dalio. So if you don't know who Ray Dalio is, he is the CEO of Bridgewater Associates, which is, the I think, the biggest hedge fund in or, the world. One of definitely the biggest one hedge of funds. Oh, with assets under management. Um, yeah. That's it's very big. So he's, he's a big um, figure in terms of uh, the economy he created or he made this really famous video called the um 
how the economic machine works. How the economic machine works, which goes really in depth on the importance of credit and how it moves everything in the economy. Uh, I suggest you guys check it out. It's a really cool animated video. And his returns as of a year ago were... Today. Uh, today. Year today. <laughs> were 18.6% uh, loss, yeah. which isn't good for a hedge fund that... that manages billions of dollars. Right. And that has been doing phenomenal until now. But it isn't so bad for, for Mr. Dalio because he still has about 45 commitments from investors. Of around the one billion dollars. Yeah, but it's just estimated that a lot of people are going to start pulling out because he's had two years of uh, bad predictions from his computer models, or the company's computer models. Yeah, and com and uh, employees have also said that he's been a bit distracted with his uh, yeah online presence. That and seems so, to be building his clout. The most popular argument or justification for why. Uh, things are going wrong. It's because he's just distracted. He's yeah. got too much clout now. Ray Dalio's Hollywood. Uh, he's Hollywood, baby. <laughs> <laughs> he's chasing that clout. Well, they're saying ever since, yeah, he wrote his book Principles. Uh, and ever since then. He's like, he he's like uh, trying to cement his legacy. Yeah. More than anything. Yeah. So it's a bit of a uh, scattered brand. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean, he's not necessarily the chief investment officer anymore. I don't believe, but he's still on the board. He's still on But can things. you really blame him with all the technology we have nowadays competing for our attention? If you're reaching that level of fame and you have so many things going on relating to your clout and, and the media, then you're probably, you know, it's it's kind of hard to avoid it and ignore it all. <laughs> he was at Burning Man. Oh, my God. Yeah, he, <laughs> <laughs> I, I saw that. He did go to Burning Man. Oh, gosh. I'm going to put this in here. That's so funny. <laughs> that is so good. And in the 80s, he, I mean, he was also um, somebody that people admired because of his um, authenticity and his honesty because he was very transparent. I mean, in the 80s, he was predicting uh, a crash he was saying the u.s was gonna default on its debt and there was gonna be a huge economic crash and he went on tv and back then going on tv national television like that was the united states in yeah. the 80s we didn't have youtube obviously and um so he looked like a complete fool so he had to set up parameters and and what he calls them principles to allow himself to not make the same kind of presumptive um investment decisions and also reputation uh tainting decisions and um and he was very popularized for telling the story showing the footage and being honest about it and i mean over the years he's been very successful he's learned from his from his lessons he practices this thing called radical transparency in his company where he gets what's that? um radical transparency is this um, idea when you have board meetings to make uh, group decisions um, in a company because you're usually making group decisions. Oh, okay. um, it's uh, you will use weight. He it's like I think um, where you basically tell people what you're thinking in a professional way, the important things, and um, you also gauge people's opinions on like a weighted average decision making ability. And they have like this algorithm that you know uh, measures people's um, expertise in different uh, categories and and and, and industries. And ultimately ranks them and then based on whatever the topic of discussion is or whatever is, um, you know, um, being debated, they they ultimately weigh the, the, the votes or the decisions on on a weighted average as opposed oh, okay. to like each vote counting as a one. So every vote. person has like a specific uh, set of specs or features like Pokemon and, and depending on like an argument between not two like people. pokemon but like more more like um just a way of expediting um making decisions without any like a form of uh politeness or uh you know just kind of you're just mm. kind of i mean you will be polite you're not going to be rude but you're not but you're not necessarily holding things um back right. and like no hard feelings to, blunt to the point of exactly. efficient system because it's important it's yeah. like it's a matter of importance and you're there to work and and create returns and ultimately make great decisions and he did show for a long period of time that he was making fantastic decisions and this year it hit it hit a lot of people hard but it was surprising that Ray a Dalio it was surprising that out of all people though Ray Dalio would be hit as hard or well not Ray Dalio specifically but Bridgewater, Bridgewater Investments um, yeah, they've let go of a bunch of employees too. 
with very strict contracts that if right they oh get my passed and it would be brutal. ridiculous because these people so they sign these contracts Damn. where they have to wait two years before they can work in any related field in the field anything related to that field right and there's even some uh stuff included in these contracts that say that they can't uh right join any sort of hedge fund for the rest of their careers or anything of related of the sort so it's almost like what do you do at that point <laughs> even if you got fired right well i mean the like, yeah it's you're like kind of in a, you're, you're stuck yeah you can't and you also ask for ask permission to like get another job yeah even after you're fired you can't like it's tough to work in the industry and like i mean to the company they don't believe like they're doing anything wrong it's a little bit unjust a little bit extreme um I mean, I had an employer who did that. It was tough. I mean, it's super annoying. But read the contracts that you're signing. Read yeah. your employment agreements. I learned that lesson the hard way. But, I mean, it depends. You know, I mean, you got to... It's tough, yeah, because you kind of screw yourself. Yeah. It's like, well, I really want this job. But also. So that ultimately concludes this episode of Pineapple Chunks. Um, luckily, Ray Dollar is going to be fine. Um, because he still is a billionaire. Yeah. And uh, although he lost maybe 50 investors and 18.6% uh, of, you know, whatever billions of dollars that he's managing, um, we're, we're rooting for him. And uh, I, I, I guess <laughs> are you rooting for I don't him? know if I'm rooting for the guy. I, mean, I don't know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think it'll be fine. Either way, sure. we're here to bring you more news like this. If you enjoyed it, please leave a comment or like it, share it with a friend. Um, if you're listening to this on the audio version, uh, subscribe, please. I mean, that'd be awesome. Yeah. It'd be fantastic. And if you have any suggestions on topics that you want to hear about, feel free to follow yeah. us on Twitter at P Chunks Pods. P Chunks Pods. P Chunks, P -Chunks Pod. Pod. Yeah, we'll put it. We'll put it there. So. We'll put it there. And uh, yeah, we're open to any suggestions. We want to hear from you guys. So. All right. Well, you all have a great day. Bye. 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 Hey everyone, Peter here. You just listened to Pineapple Chunks. If you want to reach out and send some facts in or learn more about the show, send me a DM through Instagram, Peter Vivas with three S's, P-E-T-E-R-V-I-V-A-S-S-S. -S -S. Thank you so much and please tune in to the next episode next week. Pineapple Chunks newsletter and podcast reflect the opinions of only the authors who are not associated persons of any financial institution. They are meant for informational purposes only and are not intended to serve as recommendation to buy or sell any security in a self-directed exchange account or any other account and are not an offer or sale of a security. They are also not research reports and are not intended to serve as the basis for any investment decision. Any third-party information provided therein does not reflect the views of Pineapple Chunks LLC or any of their subsidiaries or affiliates. All investments involve risk and the past performance of a security or financial product does not guarantee future results or returns. Keep in mind that while diversification may help spread risk, it does not assure a profit or protect against loss. There is always the potential of losing money when you invest in securities or other financial products. Investors should consider their investment objectives and risk carefully before investing. The price of a given security may increase or decrease based on market conditions and customers may lose money, including their original investment. Pineapple Chunks LLC is not a member of FINRA, SIPC, or the SEC.